welcome to a new video. Tonight I'll be going for a night ride on the Segway P65 electric scooter. I don't know if they even actually sell this one anymore, <laughs> but um, I've seen where they have the new um, ZT3 model, or I think that's the model number that's on sale, that's just, you know, just released recently for $9.49. So, if you were to come across one of these P65s for anywhere close to its original retail price, I think that that new ZT3 beats this one handily. They both have the same top speed of 25 miles per hour, but the, the new one has full front and rear suspension, and it has tires that are capable of doing a little bit of off-road duty. So, seems like performance-wise, they would have a similar top speed, but the other one would be more capable in um, mixed terrain than this one, which is pretty much just for the road. I haven't actually checked one out myself, and I have enough scooters now, so I don't know that I'll be buying any new ones anytime soon, but um, I've seen some videos on it, and I know that sometimes people come across videos like this and ask, is this worth buying? Um, I would say with this, P, this P, P65, if you came across one of these at a hugely discounted price, because uh, I think I got this one for $8.99 a year ago, or over a year ago. Like over a year and a few months. Um, and at the time, I thought it was a pretty good deal, just based on what was out in the world in the competition. Also, the fact when I'm buying electric stuff now, I do pay attention to ones that have... Um, you know, the UL certified and rated, you know, batteries and uh, charging cables and everything just because I don't want to burn my house down. And there has been a fair bit of um, examples in the news, at least, of electric scooters or bikes catching on fire. A lot of times it's ones using, you know, kind of sketchy um, chargers that aren't the original ones that came with the device or it's ones that have been modified or things like that um, you know or just cheap ones that don't have great quality control so segway seems to have you know one of the highest um overall ratings on on the security stuff from that side you know in terms in terms of being safe to charge and um, not catch on fire <laughs> and having safe batteries and safe chargers and overall having good battery uh, management systems built in so that you're not running into charging issues. So uh, that's why I stuck with Segway. I know there are ones out there that are plenty uh, fast, much faster than this. But I'm going through Cherokee Park in Louisville, Kentucky at night. It's uh, not actually that late because, uh, you know, in October it gets dark pretty early. So it's not even actually, you know, nine o'clock or anything yet. Um, just around 8 p.m. But it does get pretty dark. And I figured I would take this for a night ride because it's October, it's the uh, spooky season. So I figure I'd go for a ride here at uh, Cherokee Park. As you can see, they put these little plastic divider things in between the car path and the pedestrian path, which is nice. Helps keep uh, cars from getting too close to the pedestrians. And Cherokee Park has a couple of urban legends that I guess you would say are spooky. And I've done videos on this stuff before where I've come through, but... I mean, the, the main urban legend around the park is that the statue of Pan, the statue of the uh, Greek god Pan, comes to life at night and walks around, which we're about to come upon right now. So this is the uh, statue of Pan, the one that supposedly comes to life at night and causes mischief. Now, whether, uh, whether you believe that a statue can come to life and uh, do stuff, um, 
we'll determine how far that legend goes with you. I don't quite believe that inanimate objects can come alive. Um, so I'm actually going to cut through the park here to some nearby neighborhoods. And then unfortunately, um, there have been real life things that happened here that were not great. I mean, the park in general is safe. I was, you know, I'm coming up here at nighttime in the dark. I'm not really too concerned about it. You know, um, there have been instances where someone um, got hurt here. It was kind of one-off isolated incidents. It wasn't really because they were in the park. It was because of, uh, I mean, some of this stuff happened here, but would have started elsewhere or could have happened anywhere. But now I'm going to be exiting Cherokee Park. So as I said, this scooter, this P65, is for the road. It has road tires. Now, can you go through gravel and stuff? Sure. I just wouldn't expect to go very fast or very far. I just turned off my, uh, my larger light because I don't really need it now that I'm going through these neighborhoods with street lamps. So that was going for a quick ride through Cherokee Park. Now I'm going through some neighborhoods in the Highlands. And, uh... You know, the electric scooters like this one, I think, you know, for commuting in a neighborhood like this would be fine. If you're trying to just go from one part of the Highlands to the other, this scooter would be more than sufficient or one that's similar to it or more capable. You know, the top speed is fine. It has adequate lighting on it. So I, mean, I have a, a Lumos Matrix helmet that has some additional lighting on it. But even if you didn't have that, I think the headlight, tail light, running lights on this thing, they're enough to be noticeable in traffic. And it has turn signals and a rear brake. I think I need to... Uh... The, um, I think the headlight was on auto, which is why it was turning off when it deemed there was enough light. But I just wanted to stay on. So that's why I switched real quick. But yeah, I think something like this for, you know, commuting in a neighborhood like this would be fine. The problem with Kentucky, though, and Louisville, is that there just aren't a ton of bike lanes or really good paths to take stuff that isn't a car or a motorcycle through main throughways in the city. Usually end up, even if there are bike lanes, you'll end up with pretty long sections where, you know, the bike lane will empty you out onto a road with a 35 or 45 mile per hour speed limit with nowhere to go, really. So now I'm on Barstown Road. So we'll just uh, ride through here. Because the uh, law is that you're not supposed to ride these scooters on the sidewalk. You're supposed to keep them on the road and share the road like a bike would. So that's what I'm doing. So uh, sometimes I, uh, I would say that you're okay to ride stuff like this on the road. The main thing is just going to be you're not going fast enough to keep up with traffic. Now at different times of the day or the week, 
if this road is backed up a little bit where traffic is not going the full speed limit then you're fine but I can see there's a few cars behind me And of course, they uh, were missing a headlight, a bunch of crash damage. And it is funny because people will go out of their way to get around you just to get stuck at the red light that's a little bit ahead. But uh, I will say having the rear view mirror on this thing is a huge safety improvement. I think without it, it might be a bit treacherous to not be able to easily see what's going on behind you. So I'm not going to keep going down Barstown Road forever. Because this is part of kind of like the business, or not the business district, but the area there's a lot of restaurants and bars, so there's a lot of pedestrian traffic. So even though the speed limit, I think, is 35, which that sign right there verifies, you're not often going to be able to do that. moped up ahead is probably same speed as me maybe a little bit faster That's not, I don't think that's even a moped. I think that's just a dude put a <laughs> put a little motor on his bicycle. So the DIY nature of that's pretty cool. It's pretty loud though. I turned off of uh, Bartown Road just to uh, get out because that that section was coming to a, to an end as it goes down towards downtown. Yeah, I was just taking a. Uh, quick night ride on this Segway P65 scooter so started out at uh, Cherokee Park went through the middle of Cherokee Park went up to the top cut over to some side streets to go to Barstown Road and then I continued down to the point that it merged with uh, Baxter Avenue yeah, so that can wrap up this ride. So that's it till next time.